Hi everybody, great news everyone. I'm back for lesson two of our creating digital graphics units. Last time round, I talked you through the scenario for this task and asked you to interpret the client brief and choose a target audience. The target audience is your personal choice and it may be very different to the one that I've chosen for my project and that's okay. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about what my audience is for my product because I don't want to lead you down a correct answer. There is no correct answer. As long as the audience that you've chosen meets the brief, your graphic aims is aimed towards that particular grouping, and in your write-ups for LO3 and 4, you've justified all the different elements you've included that meet that audience. We'll talk more when we get to that stage of creating it about how we can appeal to different audiences. Um, but for today, our task is mainly to look at some of the other elements of designing our work. So on lesson two, our learning objectives, by the end of this video, you should be able to create a mood board, a visualization, and understand how to achieve top marks for your art. Now, I use art in its very loosest sense. Creative Eye Media is not an art course, and almost nowhere in any of the units are you being judged for the quality of your drawing or your artistic interpretations. This unit, and in fact course, is much more a marketing course, very similar to business studies, using some elements of ITT, and sticking it together with the audience understanding the interpretation that you get from a media studies GCC. The art on this is purely here to guide the designer, and it's a good thing to try and bear in mind that in this course you are an employee of a company creating products. You may not necessarily be the artist, you are definitely the designer. And as a designer, it's up to you to come up with a general idea of what things will look like and produce something that is showing the artist that you perhaps already pay for as part of your company what you'd like them to produce. And then it's up to them to produce it at a certain level of quality. So, the mood board, an interesting first one to start off here, because it's not on the task sheets. So why spend time doing it? Well, the requirements are, for the marks, that you have some uh, design documents from other units. It says, uh, use knowledge and reference to skills from other units. What it means by that is R081. And last time round, I asked you to create a mind map of potential target audiences. Moodboard is one of those other design tools that we can use, and it is very useful when we go on to start making our visualizations. So let's start with mood boards. The scenario for this task is to create a cover for a Blu-ray for an England women's football team called Daring to Dream, England's Story at the World Cup. The uh, film's gonna be given a U rating, it's, we already know what a, a DVD Blu-ray style cover looks like. And the important thing to bear in mind on this section here is this daring to dream England story at a World Cup. A mood board is a selection of images that you include in a document to show the sorts of things that you think of in your head. It's very much your chance to try and take anything that you think and to put it onto the page. So I get the idea of, of where your mind's going. And many of you will have very different viewpoints. That's perfectly fine. In LO3 and LO4, you'll explain your choices. But for now, I need to see them. So, mood boards. When I do mood boards myself, I always do them digitally. You can do them physically on paper, uh, but you would normally need to scan those in, and it seems like an extra task. And considering for a mood board, there's no need to reference any sources, means we can steal stuff off the internet for this particular task. Um, I do it digitally, because I could just find some images on a search engine of your choice. We will talk about stealing off the internet a little bit further down when we start to create our images, because this is the only part of the unit where you can take things from the internet and put them in your own work and not receive a penalty. So, for a mood board, I quite like things to be organized. Now that's definitely down to my own personal personality more than a way and style of doing it. Mood boards are a very loose design document. There's no right or wrong way to do them. But because I have a very organized mindset, 
Whenever I have a mood board, I always divide the page into either four or three sections, depending on the task. For this one, this is where I went. I decided to have one half of the page, which is all about the subject of the task. So in this particular case, the things I think of when I, someone says, World Cup, football, England women's team. All the things I thought of, I stuck on that side of the page. The example section is where I went to try and find examples of pre-existing products. This task, and in fact all of the tasks in Creative Eye Media, are based on real life examples. There is a DVD or a Blu-ray of sports montages from various different events. The World Cup has many, many examples. As a vocational course, as an employee of a media company, it's not your task to break conventions, to do something amazingly creative with the greatest respect. That's not going to happen. What you need to do as a marketing person is to think of, well, what do my competitors do? And not to copy, but to be inspired by them. You will often find that the manufacturers of these sorts of sport DVD Blu-ray discs, they will follow a very similar theme, and the examples I'm going to show you will back that up. I always also have a section for colours and fonts. It's an often overlooked section, but it's one of the ways that you can really make your work appeal to you and to make it personalised. Personalization of the mood board is definitely a mark man free top mark area. If you can show that you've put your own thought into it rather than spend two minutes on Google putting six images that have football in them, then you are going to achieve a lot more. So when I talk to subject, I'm not going to bore you by showing you my Google searches to, to find a thing. I'm just going to put the images up on the page. That's what I came up with. I searched for football. I search for World Cup, I search for Women's World Cup, I search for England team, and I search for football. And this is what I found. I'll move myself out of the way a little bit so you can see roughly what's going on. Um, so to start off with, I had uh, various football players. I tried to find uh, team and match scenarios. I didn't specifically just search for England, although most of these are England. Um, this one here is, I think, the American team. I wanted one here because I wanted to see what a team looked like when they celebrated a win, and the Americans have won the World Cup quite often. Uh, so I've got an image of, of that there. I also wanted to see an image of the trophy. Um, now, I was going to put the trophy as separately as well, but I found out that the logo for the most recent World Cup actually featured a stylized version of the trophy, so I thought there's no need to put that. I really like the colour schemes in this one here. The colour scheme of the ball on this trophy here is actually the same as the colour scheme on the football that they use, the official match day football. And if I just move my chair out of the way, if my green screen allows me, there was another image here of um, sort of the football team all sitting together celebrating a goal or some such sort of thing but this are all the sorts of things that I thought about when I thought about football and you're going to notice already that even though I haven't planned it I, I, I did this a few minutes ago just to find some images they all have a very similar theme sports photography has different ways of doing it you're often seeing that you're going to see images of football pitches you've got the idea of uniform as soon as you see a sort of a uniform a kit a strip then you've got colour schemes already being built for you. Now, this is not a montage of the World Cup. This is very much a montage of England's journey in the World Cup, and so therefore a couple of colours are really screaming out to me straight away. Next on, I looked for some examples of existing products, and I found these. Okay, lots of great examples here. Many of them are of Men's World Cup or Historical World Cups. Um, that's partly part of the course historical that the that there are more dvds of that sort of thing out um i've also found ones of other sports uh different languages uh this one here is is just football in general about brian clough rather than um uh the world cup but all of these images here existing real life dvds have a very similar theme they all have highly stylized and edited images on the front cover most of them have what we would call a hero image. A hero image is usually of one or two 
people, characters, players in this case, usually performing an action that would be famous. And so take a look here at, uh, I think, Michael Owen. Uh, we've got uh, Bobby Charlton. Perhaps I'm not sure. I don't really know football too well. Uh, we've got the uh, the rugby team, and they're holding up theirs. Uh, so they're very stylized, very much cut out of the background. There's very few images there which are just exactly how they looked in real life. Even something like this one here, where you've obviously got an image of the game in action. Uh, they've ripped off the center bit there to put some extra text. Okay, uh, the text itself is is you know this idea of greatest comes out. It really is sort of, you know, but I believe in miracles, listing of matches, the trophies always seem to feature heavily, the logos when it's about a particular World Cup, the logos really stand out every single time. Um, so there's some common themes. After that I would always go colours and fonts. Um, I usually use this sort of style. I try and think of three or four colours that stand out to me the most when I when I think or see of a product. And so for the England kit, uh, which uh, for the women's team was either sort of a, a white and blue or something like a white and red sort of strip. So these are the sorts of colours that I that I saw a lot on when I was searching images. So I decided to, to go for a very similar sort of thing. So I chose a white and I actually used a colour picker tool in PowerPoint to, to choose the blue from this strip here, which I quite I thought the white and blue worked well together. Um, the next ones I came up with most of all was looking at the fact that all of this is mentioning football and uh, football pitches so I color picked uh, the green from the pitch down here and finally this yellow came from the trophy and the football both of which have a yellow in there I think I actually got it from the football um, it stood out as a color that when I saw the ball I instantly saw that and since I saw the yellow it made me think of gold it made me think of winners it made me think of champions so I stuck it there I've then put some text um, I've used the same word every single time. I've got three different fonts and two different colors. And I've overlaid the words on top of the images in order to show what they would look like on the cover. It's a great way to see whether or not your text color is going to pop uh, from the background. If it blurs or blends in too much or if it looks horrible and ugly, uh, then it's gonna be something that you might want to try and avoid. Uh, so my fonts, are the same each time. I picked a relatively standard font, just a sort of, I think it's, that even might be Calibri or something like that. It's it's a standard font from Word, just to show what it would look like in normal text. I then tried to pick two more stylized fonts. For this particular font here, what I was looking for was to try and match as close as I could the sorts of style of text from the France World Cup. It's kind of, it maybe not the France for these little, little, there, but for the Women's World Cup, I was looking for the same sort of thing there. All capitals, just in the same way that that's all capitals. For for this uh, font here, I was taking more inspiration from the from the DVD covers. Um, so a lot of them have very stylized fonts. The one here for Germany 2006 really stood out for me, and I tried to find one that that kind of looked as close as I could. In terms of colors, I mess around the colors to try and find colors that, that seem to work well the black seemed to to go well with this yellow and green more the yellow which i really liked uh seemed to go well with these two but it's personal choice and it's just the the things that initially came to my thoughts so your mood board could be about the sorts of things that you think of. Just throw as many images as you can in there, try and fill your page, and try and make sure there's a common theme. Notice here how I have grouped them together. That is partly because I'm organized like that, and it makes me feel a bit better to see them in groups, but having them scattered around can sometimes feel very messy, very random. Um, here, by grouping them, you are showing some level of of thought, of organization, of trying to work out well, what works best. Okay. Once you've created your mood board, well, that's what's then going to take me on to your visualization. The visualization is your mood board images, the things that you've seen, and trying to make that unique for yourself. I'm going to take a lot of inspiration from what I see here. I'm then going to replace these sorts of images with the sorts of images that I see here. And I'm going to change the colors to match the colors 
that I've chosen. So that's how the mood board and visualization link together and why a mood board is a very good tool for this particular unit, even though it's not in the requirements and specified. So in terms of visualizations, I have taught creative eye media for quite a number of years and seen lots of different examples of how people do it. Um, you are absolutely welcome to grab yourself a pen, pencil, start sketching out as much of this as you can. Let's see how well I can do this on my drawing tablet. Probably not. I'm not a great freehand artist. Um, it's not necessarily my skill, my forte, but I'll have a crack. Uh, sketching out what you think your page might look like. Uh, please, please, if you're gonna do this, use an actual ruler. Uh, it's so much easier and better and more professional to do that. Um, and I would start to sort of label different bits that I want. One important thing is that you could very, very carefully sketch out all the details like my U certificates here that I'm gonna have and my U certificate there and color it in and make it look very pretty. It's worth no extra marks realistically okay the level of art that you're going to produce on here is just not going to be in any way useful you might as well try and make it as quick and as messy as you can and then move on to the next tasks so as daring to dream i can't remember the rest england's something journey to the world cup bah, 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 bah. so this is the start of my um my Blu-ray cover, I've got my text, I've got, initially this is going to be a sort of a logo for the for where the World Cup's going to go. I've got my certificates, legal things, going to need those. Going to need to have my title down here. And in a visualization, you are welcome to just add things like this if you don't want to write them all out. Um, you even don't have to do anything else. You can, for instance, I, I definitely want to have, I definitely want to have a hero image. So I want to have a hero here. So a hero, as I said before, is a is a large image, usually of one or two characters, sort of the figurehead of your of your product. Uh, so you'll see this a lot in advertising, in marketing. If you see like one person usually standing there with a, with a drink, or um, if you imagine, like, just using my example here, a footballer. Think of the, the gamers out there. If you're into your FIFA football games, then usually they have like one footballer on the front cover, which may change each year. That's a hero image. The idea in marketing terms is that you want the viewer, the consumer, the purchaser to, to imagine themselves as that person. And it's easier to do that when there's one person. So the hero image, uh, the big banner sort of style. Uh, I could, if I had any sort of art skills, draw it here. Uh, I don't have any art skills. So I could, if instead, just do that that would get me exactly the same marks as if I'd spent four hours trying to draw this. It's important to remember in terms of hours that this course is supposed to be done in 10 hours. Uh, so I ain't got time for this, okay? Um, in fact, I don't even have time to do stickmen. That's boring. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna block it out. So blocking out is a tool in, in visualizations which we can use where I will just put a rectangle or square or shape or something that would symbolize it, and then I would label it. So here is going to be my hero image. If I wanted to have more details, then I might put either sort of an asterisk or maybe a number or something like that. And then I would link it to an asterisk out off the page. Hero image, image of, in, um, image of England footballer. in game. So I'm just making sure that it's not going to be like they're, they're, they're just their face. It's going to be in the match. That's what I want to see there. And I'm going to, I'll pretty much do the same for the, for the rest of this as well. Um, so if you are welcome to do this stuff by hand, um, but realistically, after a while, you may start to get the idea that I'm not a big fan of it. If you've got the skills and you've got the time and the inclination to do it, then do it. But I don't. I would do this.
For me, again, appealing to my organized mind, this is a much better way of laying stuff out. Um, I've used PowerPoint to create this, or any drawing tool would work, really. Uh, I've used rectangles to do it. Notice the complete lack of coloring. Uh, I'm not interested in coloring at this particular stage. Um, I've blocked out the various bits that I want to use. I've put things like the, the titles and titles and here images and a use certificate. And just behind me there, you might just be able to see potentially that there's another use certificate there. Uh, legal blurb. Uh, that was just me writing all the stuff that goes on the back of a DVD Blu-ray. Uh, the certificates, the... Um, barcodes, that sort of stuff. Uh, we're going to talk about that when we get to legislation, uh, but for now that's perfectly fine as it is. And that's okay. As a visualization, that pretty much works. If you gave that to an artist, they could probably make a crack at it. It's probably going to get, oh, I don't know, maybe a high mark band one, low mark band two, as is. Um, and it took me about four or five minutes to create something like that. So let's say I want to get a little bit higher than that. I've got slightly better aspirations for myself. Well, I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm then going to annotate around the edge. And so all that stuff that I mentioned on my previous uh, bit where I was looking at um, annotating it with stars and stuff like that, I've put here image of footballer here. Well, actually, I might... I might name them at this point if I want to go for the distinctions. I might start thinking, well, who is the star England player that I want to put on the front here? Black and white football pitch. Well, I don't actually want to get a black and white football pitch as such. Maybe I'm going to cut that out. So actually I'm going to have the footballer in colour and then the pitch I'm going to in some way put some sort of filter in there. In terms of title, well, I might again annotate that by actually putting the title up here. So again, I don't need to mess up my visualisation. What I'm doing uh, is annotating it and achieving all those extra marks that would normally happen. Okay, and let's put a logo there. Logo, so this is the uh, 2019 France World Cup logo. I could even start to label some of the colors and things like this here. And it's going to start looking very mind mappy at this point. because so I'm going to start daring to dream. I'm going to go, well, yellow. I'll just go yellow font on front and perhaps here I might go black on white for the spine text that I've got here. Montage of World Cup scenes, well I'm going to try and get about four, maybe five. I want to find some of the like team celebrating i'm going to try and find a picture of a goal maybe one of the someone doing a challenge tackle they also look quite spectacular in the, in the photos so something like that to show some action uh, marketing message i might start thinking about what that marketing message is like uh, uh, relive the greatest because that word greatest was used a lot in my research greatest World Cup. And in terms of marketing, you are free to pretty much say whatever you want about this World Cup. As long as it's positive, um, you can you can put much of one in there. Uh, what else am I going to see? I'm going to talk about all the things that are in my uh, DVD. Well, it's a fake DVD. It's not a real one, so we don't know what's in it. But we can take a hazard a guess. Looking at my research, um, these sorts of things always include things like goals, uh the sort of a lot of them had like behind scenes so like interviews with players uh, managers that sort of thing um they always tended to have as like um like the story so so from that i meant like a, like group stages through to finals completely missed out the quarterfinals then semi-finals etc do that for real in your own course. Um, but I'm starting to think of all the sorts of things that I'm going to have. Where I've got legal blurb, again, I might start to, to, to label that and actually think, well, what is all the stuff that goes on it? Well, that's going to involve a little bit of research. And you start to see now how you get a distinction.
level two distinction. It's taking the exact same thing here, but I'm now making it more detailed. So if I now give this to an artist, before montage of cutscenes, they might have put eight, 12 or two different photos in there. I've now made it much clearer for my artists as a designer, as a marketing person, as that's what this course is. Um, I've now given my artist a much clearer instruction. Okay. For your task this time, I would like you to create a mood board and a visualization. For top marks, I want that visualization to be annotated fully to such a degree that you could give that annotation to an artist and they would be able to produce something similar to what you would want it to look like. For my students, whether we're submitting this or share my homework, for anyone else out there, there on the internet, then please follow the instructions from your teacher. Thanks very much. Goodbye.